Executive Brief. Executive Brief. My good people of Abia State, it is my honor and pleasure to address From the seat of governance in Abia, God's own state, comes a compendium of the governor's weekly engagement and the service to humanity and God. This government is the next second and final channel, and therefore we are in a hurry to get traction and achieve what our mandate the people are giving to us and defined for us as assignment. Join the Chief Press Secretary to Abia State Governor Onyebuchi Imemanka on Flu 94.9 FM as he tracks Governor OKZ Bazu's activities in delivering on the social contract with the good people of Abia State. We have received awards and acknowledgement as the SME capital of Nigeria in recent time. Executive Brief. Every Friday at 9.30 a.m. on Flu 94.9 FM, the flu of God's own state. Executive Brief from the Hearses. Now. There is now a deliberate effort to ensure that our infrastructure is solid and durable. Of course, uh, the business of governance is daunting and demands a lot of precision and decision making. Well, Providence has it that Chief Executive Officer, if I had to put it that way, of Abbey State is none of the than Governor OKZ Ibazo, and he's saddled with the responsibility of managing scarce resources and applying tact and diplomacy in man management, that is, human resources. The office of the governor is saddled with responsibility of overseeing the affairs of the state in its generality. And well, we'll be looking at the activities of the governor in the past week. Executive Brief is a program brought to you from the office of the Chief Press Secretary, Barrister Onyebuchi Imemanka, a compendium of Governor Ibaz's activities. My name is Temple Barra, and I'll be doing this together with none other than the man of the moment who will be one year in office tomorrow, the sixth day of June, 2020. Barrister Onyebuchi Imemanka, very good morning to you. Yeah, thank you. Ururaja. TC Barra, thank you. It's, it's a pleasure to be here, as always, yeah. All right, so let's start off with what's hot on the plate. The past few weeks after we had you, you know, last week, come talk about Governor Ibazu's uh, uh, five years administration and what it's been like. We got a press release from the Office of the Commission of Information asking members of the ESCOs and Interministerial Committee to self-isolate. It went further to say that uh, Transition Committee Chairman and the deputies should um, also, you know, do the same thing. This comes on the heels of the fact that a certain man, Emmanuel Ononiwu, had surrendered himself to the isolation center. And on the, uh, after the death of the late commissioner for environment, Dr. Solomon Ogunji was announced. The state somehow to turn into some sort of pandemonium if all the executives will be going into self-isolation who will run the state because that really says the governor will do the same and the deputy governor and we're wondering if the chief press secretary is not going into isolation who then will because he basically is with the governor all the time can you just you know tell us about what transpired why the press release and if the situation has been quelled Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, good morning, uh, Adians. It's been a very challenging uh, week, but uh, we thank God for His grace. Thank God for the strength to carry on. Uh, leadership has its own demands. Okay. When you lead the people, you must lead by example, especially at a time where there is... Uh, a ram a rampaging and ravaging health pandemic uh, which is uh, which has turned the entire world upside down leaders must show leadership and uh, what the governor of other states dr okezi bazu did was to apply leadership by example by asking all those who hold positions Top positions, particularly at the state level, okay, to demonstrate practical leadership at a time. You see, we're talking about life here. Uh, a lot of things have been said about the COVID-19. Practically everybody uh, in the world today 
he has become an expert in the etymology of this disease. Yeah. So, but the the most common thing we know is that social distancing, wearing of certain protective gears, hand washing, use of hand sanitizers, uh, 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 basic uh, irreducible minimums for helping to fight this pandemic. And again, with the increase in the in the number of uh, confirmed cases, okay. there is need to to know those who actually have tested positive or those who have this disease. You know, because a lot of people are asymptomatic. You have no symptoms that, at that all. That is to say you don't have symptoms. No symptoms at all. You are healthy or you look healthy. I mean, well, you are busy uh, infecting other people. So what the governor did was to show leadership. First of all, he underwent the test himself. Okay. And it turned out? Together with members of his family, his wife and children undertook the test. And uh, to the glory of God, uh, it, it turned out negative. Okay. So of course he ordered is, he, yeah, the, the governor is negative. So he's no longer under self isolation. Well, the, the governor is mourning the death of Doctor Ogunji, okay. and uh, he 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 still keeping to himself for now. And uh, the, the 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 his slight withdrawal from the public has nothing to do with. Uh, of course, when 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 he presented himself for the test, naturally you self isolate until the results come out. Okay, so he's no longer self-isolating. No, he, he's now mourning. Okay. He's now mourning. All right. Uh, so, um, and I, I want to also tell you that uh, in line with the directives of the governor, members of the Abia State Executive Council undertook this test. Yes. And the uh, results have been expected. Some, some have come. Uh, of course, the governor himself said it, that two of his aides... Uh, I, I, that's what I wanted to ask you. You know, do we have names to that? What positions or portfolios? No, are no, these there, there are there are no names. The, you know, the protocols, health protocols, demand that uh, certain levels of privacy are kept. But uh, I want to assure you that uh, I am not one of those aids. That doesn't make me. My own test is yet to come. So you don't have your results yet? No, I don't have my results So yet. you should be six feet apart from me right now. Yes, yes. I draw my chair a little yeah, bit please, further. Yeah, please, please. Just go back, <laughs> small. You know, so... Um, but you've, you've, you've underwent the test. Yes, I, I have done my test. Okay. Uh, the day the members of the Executive Council did theirs, I did mine too. And uh, since then, if not that I have a responsibility to uh, honor this program, I wouldn't have been here. Uh, we are all self-isolating, except for those whose results are out and they tested negative. And you know, the funny thing about this disease or this pandemic is that that you tested negative today does not, I, I'm not a doctor, but it does not mean you should let down your guard. The chain of events and all. That. Yes, you could also become positive if you, if you, if you don't do the right things. And uh, again, it is important that our people know and appreciate the fact that in line with what the governor said some time ago and what he has consistently said that testing positive to COVID-19 is not a death sentence people have recovered as a matter of fact across the globe if you look at the available statistics even here in Nigeria the number of people that have been discharged outweigh the number of those that have died from this from this uh, pandemic so even if anybody tests positive, it is not a death sentence. Okay? Of course, yes, uh, you've said it all. Um, and let me say this. Okay. That the governor is not seen in public or that the commissioners are in self-isolation does not create any vacuum whatsoever. So the government the is in running. The, in the business of governance. No vacuum whatsoever. Last week, we discussed the virtual meetings that have the governor held. He virtually, uh, on an e-platform, inaugurated the state post-COVID-19 committee, uh, advisory committee. Governors have been meeting virtually. Uh, the, yesterday, the president had uh, uh, presented over an e-meeting of the Federal Executive Council. So, there is no gap in government. You understand how government works. There are structures, there are layers of authority. And uh, these days, information technology, the use of telephone i've made things easier you know so 
there is absolutely no a lot of people called me some journalists called me from lagos with the information that everybody is who is running the government i i, I find that question as extremely very ridiculous i mean how can you ask if who, who runs the government you know if some if you'd say uh, the governor is mourning yes does he still um dish out instructions or um you but, know but but the, gov the even while in mourning the governor did something he doesn't usually do he re he, he released a, st a statement was released signed by the governor himself where he 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 spoke about his negative the negative outcome of his covid 19 te uh, tests and the, the the positive outcome of the tests on two of his aides where he now gave further directives that members of uh, uh, tc chairman seven of the 17 local government their deputies and their top members should should also be tested it was in that same release that the governor said that there is need to increase you know the the rate of tests you mass know testing. mass testing so how could there be how could there be a vacuum there's no vacuum in government whatsoever all right so let's move on a, a statement was released by the state uh, uh secretary to the state government in vice the criticism of course yeah. a Leonard fellow like you um yes. which has to do with the distribution of quality yes and uh, some items were uh, listed in that and had to be given to 17 local government what is um government doing to sustain um the the distribution of some of this quality some people are complaining the streets are filled up people no longer even want to stay at home and of course there's this concern in government quarters that the market uh, traders do not adhere to the three days a week sales which is mondays wednesdays and fridays between the hours of 9 a.m and 3 p.m how is government managing some of this development well it, 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 the, the covid 19 has brought a lot of challenges and has taxed and stretched the resources available to government to its limit it has long passed its elastic limit but uh, government has to hold on somehow uh they, they there were two releases actually from the office of the secretary to government these things also prove to you that there is no vacuum in government at all uh the governor felt look there is need to continue to support our people give more palliatives to our people and uh, this time targets the grassroots and uh, the governor approved graciously even at a time we are having issues with finance are we now of course uh things life has not returned to normal uh igr remains an issue uh markets may be running but uh but have you been able to the, pay the, salaries the, 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 go the government the government uh i believe I believe salaries have been paid for the month of uh, for the month of uh, May. Okay. I believe so. I believe so. Uh, challenges of cash flow remains a problem uh, because a lot of businesses are still shut down. Most markets run three times a week, which you can't qualify as skeletal services. And it will be difficult, if not inhuman, uh, inhuman, sorry, to uh, ask these people to pay the usual tolls that they pay, the normal tolls. So is some concession given to them? Of, there has to be. There, I mean, there is no way a trader that usually does business for between Monday and Saturday, you now ask him to do business for three days and you still expect him to pay the same amount of tolls. I do not think the governor will allow it. That, that 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 kind of thing so oil revenues have plummeted i'm sure you know that the federal government has submitted a revised appropriation bill to the national assembly yes. uh, which which seeks to address the stark realities of the time a lot of estimates have gone down so things will be affected but in spite of that uh, the governor has also given out some of these palliatives through the office of the district secretary to government each local government, each of the each of the seventeen local governments will get four hundred cartons of spaghetti, one hundred and fifty cartons of tin tomatoes, twenty gallons of vegetable oil, nine hundred cartons of noodles, fifty five crates of malt drink, two hundred sachets of sugar, and five hundred bags of salt. Each of each local government, each. Uh, and there's a target recipient. Of course, it's not. Uh, is it? Uh, uh, let, let me repeat this. 
uh, and the governor has said it severally. These palliatives go or should go to the most vulnerable people in our society. You know, and I want to appeal to our local government chairman across the state to ensure that uh, they are in, in distributing these things, they are guided by their conscience and the fear of God. This is a very difficult period. A lot of people are finding it difficult to survive. This is not a stakeholder's thing. This is not something you bring party leaders. That is why in the statement released by the is Secretary... There, is there a channel for feedback to find out if you know people, the right people actually got this? Well, the, the, the local government chairman, the local government chairman and their, 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 their aides at the local government level will be held responsible if, if there are lapses. And uh, I know our local government chairman. I know them. I know the 17 local government chairmen. These are very decent gentlemen. I do not think any of them, I do not think any of them will look at what is he doing with uh, Nodo? What, what is the local government chairman going to do with spaghetti in his house? He, they know. I know them. They know that these things, government, the, the governor has brought these things to reach out. It's not even enough. It's not even enough. Talk of holding some. And uh, I, I am confident that our local government chairman we do what is right, and uh, I'm sure they will. All right. Let's but just take, note, take note that not every, you see, everybody cannot get this thing. It's not possible. I understand that. We'll take a breather right now. When we return, of course, Executive Brief continues as a compendium of the activities of the Abbey State Governor, Okizie Victor Ibazu, PhD. My name is Temple Bar with me. Barista from Yobuchi and Mimanka in the studio. At Flow 94.9 FM, we've got conducive and well secured environment for business. High tech video studio, a state of the art production studio. You can also listen live on www.flow949fm.com and watch our videos on YouTube at Flow FM TV. Flow 94.9 FM, not just radio, but a complete broadcasting house. You're still tuned in to Flu 94.9 FM, the Flu of Gotham State. It might interest you to know that after this time out, you can watch this clip on our YouTube platform. It is Flu FM TV. Get on YouTube, search it out, and uh, you could get to watch this clip over and over again. I do have Barrister Nyobuchi Memenka, who is the Chief Press Secretary to the Abbey State Governor, Okizie Victor Ibazo, in the studio. And on the program today, we've been looking at some hot topics. Of course, that's trended in the week as regards the activities of the governor in some press releases that have been made in the past week. We've just finished discussing uh, palliatives and its distribution. And, of course, the chief press secretary uh, has said that uh, this should get to the most vulnerable and that the local government transition chairman will be held accountable. Curfew by the federal government have been extended to 10 p.m. So it's going to be between the hours of 10 p.m. and 4 a.m. And a press release again has said that uh, Abitik government, government uh, asking residents to follow suit and fall in line. Yeah, uh, naturally, uh, the, the, the hierarchy of governance in the country must be respected. Uh, the gov federal government has e issued this uh, new directive and uh, naturally states must uh, fall in line. And... Uh, I think there is a, a, a progressive movement towards, I think what the gov federal government, state governments, and indeed governments across the globe are doing, is they have come to the realization that we have to find a way to live with COVID. We cannot shut down the world <laughs> indefinitely. And uh, if you look at the body language of the presidential tax force, uh, you, you agree with me that uh, the plan, the ultimate plan, is that, um, and I believe in between now and the next six weeks, practically every facet of our economy that have been shut down will be open. Domestic flights sh should start before the end of uh, this, this month and <laughs> so many other things. So the thing there is that individuals must take personal responsibility for their health. Because government cannot, I'm sure, very soon, schools will open. You're certain about that? I, I'm, I'm just guessing. Okay. <laughs> because the truth is that you cannot shut the world down permanently. Okay. So, but we mustn't forget that uh, 
this week, too, Governor Kezi Baza approved the elevation of some civil servants. Oh, well, I was just headed in that. Okay, I'm like, okay, I'm okay. like um, I saw a press release from the office of the head of service, Onyuama, yeah. who said that the governor had graciously approved. And, you know, it threw social media into some sort of a, a what's the word now? It was a, a, a celebration. Yeah. Uh, I, I, and I can imagine, you know, such promotions coming in the. I missed some of these, you know, troubling times. Yeah. It would have been a very tough decision to make. It is. Uh, it, uh, it was. But uh, Governor Kezi Bazi is a man who believes that uh, when a man has worked hard, when a man is deserving of some form of elevation, he should get it. I'm sure you know that uh, the, the position of a permanent secretary is the highest a position. Uh, a civil is, servant. is this the first in this administration? How come? We have had. I mean, this second term. Second term, I think so, yes. Okay. So I think so. I need to be very sure. But it has been part of Ibazo's, Governor Ibazo's uh, policy to elevate civil servants. And this one is making a lot of news because it is the highest. People are promoted on, on a regular basis. Okay. People are moved from uh, one, one level to the other. You know, but the permanent secretary position is the highest you know, uh, position. And it, it's worth celebrating. And I want to use this opportunity uh, to congratulate those 13 Abians whose elevation was approved by Governor Kezibaz. 13 of them are career civil servants. Who have served our who have worked in the state public service in the state civil service for a long time some of them have put in over 20 years some 25 they've worked very hard and uh, the, the elevation is well deserved and uh, a clear signal a clear message to other civil servants that if you keep your eye on the prize if you sustain the ethics of the service that one day you will get elevated to and uh, to the new permanent secretaries uh, of course, they will be sworn in at a later date, but uh, I want to congratulate them and uh, wish them well mm -hmm. in their careers. All right, we'll be wrapping things up on the program, the third episode in a series of many to come. Of course, three more years to go. Uh, you were counting last, <laughs> last oh, week. Yes. Well, at this point in time, I'd like to ask you one pertinent question. Why didn't you pick the call from the studio on your birthday? um why uh, uh, honestly the uh, my wife uh, took me by surprise they they seized my telephones <laughs> my wife and my children they took my phones and i insisted that i must i must co concentrate today i must concentrate uh and uh, leave work for a few moments and uh, give my time to the family they organized some very uh, a surprise package for me got a few very few friends well, i thought you were scared that you probably would be pranked from the studio well maybe <laughs> uh, but I, I didn't even know that uh, you people called because i couldn't find my phones and when it's i asked right. my daughter said my phones are safe that uh, they want me to stay without my phone for some time today okay. and so that i can reflect on the true significance of the birthday and i want to thank uh, my friends my colleagues family uh, who who serenaded me with lots of love and messages on my birthday how old are you i'm 43. congratulations thank many more much. fulfilling years and uh, one year in office tomorrow yes i'll be one year tomorrow in office as chief press secretary to the governor of Manchester. congratulations on that and many more my son thank you very much that's the much we can take on executive brief Today's edition has been beautiful, wouldn't you say? Find us on YouTube, Flow FM TV, and watch the clips after this time. Have a wonderful Friday, and stay on the dial 94.9 FM. Join us next week, Friday at 9.30, for another explosive episode of The Executive Brief. My name is Temple Bada. <laughs>